name is Liz Jagala and my Indian name is the lady who knows how to sing and I told you I was from Fond du Lac Reservation which is up north. I'm Ojibwe, uh, some people say Anishinaabe, some people say Chippewa, we're all the same group of people uh, that live around the Great Lakes region. First I want to make sure and say that uh, I'm, I'm not an expert. I, I know that that's a word that people like to use but in uh, our culture we, we try to make sure that we express our, um, you know, our learning path. And so what I do know, I love to share with people, um, but there are people out there that know a lot more uh, than I do, and that is how oral tradition is. We really um, embrace that uh, unique perspective on, on culture, especially because there's not one way to be Anishinaabe, there's not one way to be, you know, American for that matter. The first song I'm going to sing is my song that helps me center myself. I'm going to use my drum. I'll tell you a little bit more about my drum later. Thank you. That song, as other songs, have parts of it that are words and parts that are not words. Some of the words um, are Wichita Tuya, and then some of the not word parts um, are the Heya Heya. You know? um, and if you hear some of those songs with no words, um, it's because that's part of how we do it. We call them straight songs, um, and music teachers might call those vocables. And every culture has vocables. If you think about this song, Tis the season to be jolly. Yeah. Nice, exactly. So the fa la 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 doesn't really mean anything, but, but it has a happy tone to it. it. It helps us continue the tune and, you know, all of these things. So the same thing with uh, the songs that have no words in uh, native cultures, uh, those vocables. They, they have a meaning, but they're not specific meaning. Um, so there's all kinds of different singing. And how many people have been to a powwow? Nice, good. How many people don't know what a powwow is? Yeah. A powwow is a gathering of native peoples where people will sing and dance. And some parts of that powwow are considered to be ceremony and some parts are just for fun, just to gather. If I'm going to go to a powwow, I would put on something called regalia or an outfit. I don't call it costume because some people get offended by that uh, idea that it's called a costume. So I would call it regalia or an outfit. So I'm going to put on some of my regalia. Uh, 
Um, our drums are considered to have a life. They're considered to have spirit. So my drum, this drum here, um, I received as a gift from my mom. And, uh, and I take really good care of this drum. I hold a feast. I invite people over to help me uh, eat on behalf of the spirit of this drum. And uh, other drums are treated with similar respect like that. There's, uh, on, in this photo, there's a powwow drum. And the powwow drums are considered to have spirit. And we, there are families that take care of those drums. Um, and the drum beat and the, the beat of the voice um, kind of separate for a little while, and then they come back together. And that's considered to be kind of a tricky thing to do uh, in, in uh, native music. And so it isn't always like the voice and the drum line up neatly together. And, and, and that's, you know, uh, that's considered to be skillful singing. I had a character I did in one show um, up in Duluth. It was called, it was by Lear Copper of the North, production and it was called Les Uncomfortables. And my character um, was the very politically incorrect Pocahontas. And, um, and so we started one of the scenes by me coming out with a hand drum doing um, Carmen. Uh, the, uh, so I did kind of like <laughs> Like that. <laughs> and then it morphed into, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I don't know if I ever really completely get to, you know, what you would call a, a pure bel canto. I know I don't, not anymore. <laughs> um, but, uh, and I don't know if I ever quite get to a pure Anishinaabe timbre, um, but I do my best to, to try and find those, um, as I think everybody does. We also have a song that uh, a group of uh, ladies that I sing with, we made this song. And this song uh, was made, we were making shakers, and, um, and our shakers are used uh, in ceremony. Uh, so we don't take them out for like this kind of performances. Um, so I'll be using an egg shaker, like you might have in your music class. Sounds like that. And the egg shaker will replace those shakers that we had made. And we made these uh, hide shakers that we had hanging drawing on a wall. And they, they made kind of a pattern on the wall. So that's how we made the song. We said, let's make the song out of the pattern. And so um, back in older times, that's how territorial songs were made. They would look at the horizon and see the pattern of the tree line or pattern of the mountains. And that's how they would make a song for that territory. Um, so we borrowed that idea and we kind of made it our own. So this is the Maingan song. One oral tradition story is about a flute, and these flutes uh, are are unique to individuals. Now we get them from stores, uh, maybe, or we ask someone to make them for us. But, uh, but a flute has um, a tradition where they used to make them the length of the uh, boy's arm. And this, uh, this flute has two chambers, two holes. If you look through, you can't see the light through the whole thing, because it stops right here. There's a little wall in there. And the air goes in here and up and over and then down across. And then there's holes, kind of like your recorders, to put your fingers on. So usually when we play these flutes, it's an improvised song. And the boy would have one that was made specifically for him, or maybe he made it. And it would be length of his arm, and the finger holes were spaced out so that it fit nice in his fingers. And it would have a, a special sound that was only his. And the girl that might like him would hear that sound and know that that was the song for her. So she you know, would maybe make a song that matched, uh, matched that flute song. I'm going to improvise a little song here for you.